Um, and now I want to uh, introduce Lisha King um, and ask Lisha to um, invite her colleagues up. Um, there's this uh, terrific co collaboration in, in New Haven, uh, uh, quite, quite nascent um, around um, the notion of wraparound services called Boost, which is in part a collaboration with the United Way. Ms. King. Good morning, thank you for having us. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of background. Um, about two years ago, as many of you know, the mayor and superintendent launched a very comprehensive school reform initiative in New Haven. Um, it has some pretty broad-reaching goals, which are to close the achievement gap, cut the dropout rate in half, and make sure that all of our graduating students are academically prepared and financially able to go to and succeed in college. Um, that plan has three planks to it. Um, the first is making targeted interventions in the schools. Um, they've gone about tiering the schools into three different levels and creating different interventions um, in each. The second plank has to do with talent, having the very best teachers and principals that we can have and working in collaboration with the AFT. Um, they developed a, nation, a model for the nation in terms of a new teacher evaluation system. Um, and the third plank is community. Um, the mayor and the superintendent acknowledge that regardless of what they do within the school buildings and with the staff, our students are facing so many challenges um, in the rest of their lives that are um, impeding their ability to be present and ready to learn when they're in the classroom. So they came to the United Way and asked the United Way if they would take the lead in terms of determining what the city and the school district and all of the nonprofits and agencies in town could do together to support students in their non-academic lives in order to prepare them for success in academics. Um, so from there, Boost was launched. Boost is a three-way partnership between the United Way, the New Haven Board of Ed, and the city of New Haven. What do we mean by these outside supports? We've, we've broken it down into really four domains that we think are really important for students to be supported in. Um, it's physical health and wellness is one. Social, emotional, and behavioral supports is two. Academic enrichment, which ba basically means after school. Um, and family engagement. So those are the four areas that we're focusing on. I think it's interesting that from both schools, or not schools, but both present presentations we heard this morning, both have mentioned this is this is the United Way, and Smalley mentioned the support of the United Way. Uh, I think the key, the key thing to, for people to to learn from this is that if you go back 20 years ago in the United Way system, there was very little involvement in education issues per se, and and the United Way system was involved in many of the other community issues that we're interested in, which is interest, which is intriguing because that lays the groundwork for bridging to some of Kip's issues because in the United Way is is not used to working at this issue as an educator, an educational association, or an educational reform group, but is a group that initially comes from looking at the broad and being involved for decades in the broader array of community and individual you know developmental issues of of children that you know that that kind of stuff. The United Way, and the Lieutenant Governor just e uh, emphasized this, is really playing that role of a linchpin in New Haven. Um, and I was struck, I was really blown away, I will say, that when Alicia uh, and her colleagues from the various regional United Ways came in recently to the Education Department, Alicia, I think it was two weeks ago, perhaps, um, uh, I was blown away by the new role of the United Way in Connecticut. Um, and it is part of a national movement as well. There are certainly best practices that you're sharing across states in the United Way system uh, with the focus on not only uh, wraparound services but um, early reading as an, as an initiative and other things that for the governor and lieutenant governor I know are priorities and I think to get to um, Mike's point about the role of this external party really uh, as part of the legacy of Community Progress Inc. in New Haven. Um, uh, one, one question is um, how did the United Way of Greater New Haven make the decision to position itself this way? And how can we as a state position more United Ways to do the very same as we, per Charlene's point before she left, begin to mobilize to do this a lot more? And, and, and you frame it exactly the right, uh, the right way uh, from your United Way perspective. We're we're, we're tr in this age of unfortunately constrained resources, the reality is we can't simply boost with 
influxes of a, a lot more money. Maybe there's glue money that can be provided to coordinate folk. Uh, that glue money, though, will not be sufficient to sustain the, the actual services. So what can we do to position more United Ways uh, to do what you do, and, and how did you just even decide to do what you did? So the United Way of Greater New Haven actually started down this path almost 10 years ago. Um, in doing a regional needs assessment with about 30 other community partners and businesses. And out of that needs assessment identified two overarching issues that really um, were the priority for the region and ones that we've held on to since that time as the guiding force for our work. And that's the education disparity that exists in our region and also the economic disparity that exists in our region. And obviously those are completely intertwined. You can't separate them. And so since the results of that work, that was actually called COMPASS, and that was something that was done um, by many United Ways across the United Way system, we've really been working to be very clear about what we are about. We are not all things to all people. Um, we are focused on education and income or financial stability. And to a lesser degree, health, um, all, much of our health work is tied into our education work. And um, we don't see that, we don't treat that in New Haven as a, as a standalone. Um, so we had been working to change how we were using our resources over time um, and to be much more involved with early childhood through our success by six work in education issues as as um, Commissioner Miotti pointed out, Mike pointed out. And we um, started working much more around workforce development issues and income stability. Um, we had reached out and have been working with lots of different partner organizations in the community on those issues since that decision in the early 2000s. And I think it was that length of time, the fact that we built up credibility, that we had stayed focused, that we were putting real resources into those um, very sticky, no short-term solution problems that got us to the point where we had the credibility and the relationships that actually the mayor and the superintendent reached out to us at the beginning of this school reform effort and said very clearly, we know this is a critical piece of this overall school reform effort, the effort that, that Leisha outlined. We cannot do this alone. We know it's critical, and we need you to help us with it. And I have to say, our board stood right up and said yes, because they knew this was the right direction for us as an organization and as a community in terms of our ability to play that glue role. We use that term, too, and we keep trying to come up with a better one, because sometimes people look at us funny. Um, but, but we see the importance of that glue role in terms of being able to bring different entities, different parts of the community together around a common, common goal and working in the same direction. Um, the other thing I would mention is that United Way of Greater New Haven is one of 10 education mobilization communities um, in the United States under United Way Worldwide. So we have committed to United Way Worldwide that we will be um, very open about sharing what we're doing, how we've gone about doing it, so that we can be used as a model for other United Ways across the country. So there is a great deal of intentionality to this. I mean, in New Haven, the New Haven saga over the last 15 years, and having been involved back in the early stages, not so much in the Compass Project, but some of the early stage education <laughs> stuff that they were doing, you know, it is 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 it's interesting to I think we're sort of in a world where if you went back 30 years ago you know sort of th the policy planning people dealing with great societal issues were largely found in the governmental sector uh, and what happened I think over the last 30 years in at least in the state of Connecticut is due to budget pressures most agencies have shed those positions that you know used to do that kind of sort of intentional planning maybe back then in old way, planning methodologies that aren't so relevant anymore or whatever but and, and, and philanthropy really didn't do much. It was just sort of, oh, you told me about a good program, here's money. Or the United Way model really was we just fund the same partners over and over again, and it's always, and, and, and a lot of those old partners got, are no longer funded in United Ways that made, went through this change process. And because of the, I think because of the high role of the corporate sector is, is, is there was a demand from their boards that it be very intentional and very thought through and very engaged. And, and so we now, I think, in a world where sometimes the, the sort of policy approach, the capabilities to be intentional about a change agenda 
as, as the architecture of doing it, not necessarily the issue specific depth on whatever it might be, but on, on the way, how do you do that in a thoughtful, intentional way that gives a framework for people to buy into and co-invest with is largely in a couple of, you know, United Way and a couple of foundations that I know well, and you know well, you know, they have this capacity and we have kind of don't have it anymore, you know, in states, yes, I'm not, there are pockets, I'm not, you know, but, but, and we have to figure out how to pull this together because that's what we, desperately need to do is to be intentional about what we're doing, not just sell programs or best practices here and there, because then you end up ultimately with a mishmash, you know, uh, but to be intentional about system change or community change, regional change at the scale that works, that actually delivers. And the beauty of the RBA approach is if you do it right, and again, it's not always done right, but if the RBA is done right, it starts with the measure at the population level, you know, so incidental anecdotal success stories that that don't change the overall community or state level of achievement gap don't count as success under RBA over a five or 10 year period. This is a very exciting, and it really is um, a tremendous step forward. And hopefully we will see you grow this program all over the state. Um, and it's not just the cities, you know, it's, uh, some of our outer cities that need it, and some of our areas in, let's say, up eastern Connecticut yes. that uh, um, not always thought about, but really do also need that kind of, uh, of assistance. So um, I would uh, thank you very, very much for coming, and, um, and I have a feeling that the commission is going to be in touch with you a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so yes. thank you. Anybody else? This time, no? Okay. Commissioner, thank you again for coming. I appreciate it.